Hello, welcome to the channel. Today we're going to talk about adding users to Power Platform environments using Power Automate. Now I'm recording this video on January 12th, which is the day that the Seahawks are in Green Bay to take on the Green Bay Packers. So we're going to see if they win or lose. So feel free to uh, jeer me or cheer me, uh, depending upon the outcome of the game. But I am pulling for Seattle in this contest. But Enough about football, let's talk about Power Automate. Now, what I want to talk about today is really specific to the non-default environment. So when it comes to the default environment, every licensed user has access to it. Now, that's generally obtained through Office 365 entitlement, maybe D Dynamics 365 entitlement, depending upon how your org is set up. But what happens when you have non-default environments and you want to provide people with access to those environments? Now, certainly you can manually add these people to those environments through the admin consoles, either the old one or the new one, but that's not overly productive when you have a big go live. Like, so perhaps you want to go ahead and, and build out a, a power app, maybe it's a canvas app, and you want to roll this out to say tens of users or even hundreds of users, and you don't want that app running in your default environment. In fact, you probably shouldn't have it in your default environment if you're going to do any level of application lifecycle management, or if your organization has change management requirements where you need to go through a change board. You also want to have an environment where you can go ahead and test out new features before interrupting people that are actually using your app. So while it's perfectly okay to use your default environment, I would say for personal productivity purposes, I would say it's not a good idea to be using it when you start to have other users using your app. So today what we're gonna talk about is how can we go ahead and add people to those non-default environments and how can we do that in an automated, automated fashion. So we've talked a little bit about this uh, already on the previous slide, but one other point I do want to touch on is the role of Azure Active Directory. So Azure Active Directory is great to create groups and you can take those groups and assign it to an app. So that is a great way of actually sharing an app. I wanna share this app, I'm gonna share it with this Azure Active Directory group. Oh, it's CDS, I'm then gonna go ahead and select a specific role. That is all fine and dandy uh, when it comes to sharing with a group but what happens when those users aren't in the environment? Well, if you're not in the environment, you don't actually have access to the environment. You need to be an environment maker to use Power Apps and Flows in these non-default environments. And that's really what the focus of this is. There's no way to say, oh, I wanna share an environment with an Azure AD group. Perhaps that's coming, I have no idea. Um, but for now, that, that isn't an option. So what we're gonna do today is we're actually gonna take advantage of the management connectors that exist in Power Automate in order to go ahead and uh, you know fulfill this requirement. So I've sort of scaled this problem down, but just to illustrate it, we've got the default environment, all of these users, they all have licenses, perhaps they're Office 365 license users. So by default, they're in our default environment, can go ahead and make flows and go ahead and make apps and that's great. But if we're gonna say, go ahead and provision a dev environment, or this could be a test environment or prod, doesn't really matter. The, the point is the same. Not every user is going to show up in that, that environment unless you've explicitly added them to it. And in this case, we've got three of the four people. Uh, the person in this case who's missing happens to be Steve. So really the, the goal of, of this video is to demonstrate how we can automate getting Steve into this dev environment. So what does the solution look like? Uh, what we're going to do is we are going to store a list of users. In this case, it's just going to be Steve, but it could be many users um, in a spreadsheet. These are perhaps all of the users that we know are going to need access to our app. And as a result, we're going to store their email addresses or their UPNs inside of an Excel online file. And so we'll trigger this flow off by using a manual trigger. So this could be a flow button. This could be from within inside of a web browser. Bottom line is we will kick this off when we want to. We will go fetch all of these records from Excel online. We will then go ahead and use the Office 365 users connectors to go ahead and retrieve what's called their object ID. So this is a GUID. It's not typically something that you see unless you're an administrator, but it really is a, sort of their primary key um, for that individual user. 
and you'll actually be able to use this object ID when calling the Power Platform and Admin connector and the force sync users operations. Um, we'll pass that value in, we'll pass in the name of the environment, and then that user will show up as a user that has access to that environment. So let's go ahead and let's demo this and let's see this in action. All right, so here we are, we're in Power Automate, but before we go too far, let's take a look at Excel. Now this is Excel Online. Uh, we have created a table, a data table, which is a requirement of the Excel Online connector. And here we have Steve's UPN, which we will use to add him to our development group. Now, if we head over to the admin center, so this is the old admin center, which is still very much in use. We can go ahead and click on our devel development environment, click on security, and then click on assign security roles. When we do this, we'll get transitioned over to a CDS experience. And here we can see all of the existing enabled users that exist. So as you can see, we do not see Steve here. But when we're done everything, we should go ahead and we should see Steve's name appeared in this list. And that's how we will know that this is actually working. So let's go ahead, let's expand the rest of this flow. So we're gonna manually trigger a flow. There's no other parameters or anything that we need to provide. We're gonna go ahead and retrieve this new user's Excel spreadsheet from Excel Online. As I mentioned before, we've got table one, which is the name of our data table. And we want to ensure that we do have a data table, otherwise Flow will not even be able to see this particular file. Now, what could happen, in this case, we're only gonna process one record, but in theory, we could have multiple records. As a result, a loop is going to get constructed and apply to each action, where we will loop through every row that appears inside of this file. Now, we wanna go ahead and get the user's profile by passing in their UPN, which is essentially like their email address. Um, it's their username and then at their domain name. And the return value of this is many things, but the one that we're interested in is this object ID. And so what we'll do is we'll configure our environment, in this case is development, and our object ID. And we will then go ahead and put Steve into that environment. So let's go ahead and let's take this for a spin and let's run this. All right, so it did take about nine, well, 11 seconds to run, but we see green, which is a good sign. So what we'll see is we've passed in a, a UPN and we should see an ID coming back. That's exactly what we want. And if we then go ahead and look at our force sync user, we can see that we have a status code of 200, uh, which is obviously a good sign. So let's flip back over to CDS. Let's go ahead and refresh. And when we do, we do see Steve has now been added to our environment and we've been able to do that automatically. Well, that concludes our demo for today. I'm really curious to know how you folks deploy your apps and flows to other environments and how you deal with this problem. Do you typically just deal with it manually by manually adding those users? Um, are you automating it through some other means, calling the API directly, using UI flows? Uh, let me know how you go about deploying your apps to other environments. I do know that Microsoft is working on more and more ALM capabilities, which should sort of smooth out this process of getting apps and flows into other environments, but you certainly still have the hurdle of dealing with the environment access itself. In addition, if you uh, don't follow me on Twitter, please check that out. Please uh, follow me at, at Weirzy. Uh, if you like this video, if you like other videos on the channel, please go ahead, like, and subscribe. And lastly, if you're interested in more content, I do have some Udemy courses available. Here's a URL uh, to a blog post where I share a bunch of discount codes. Uh, so go ahead and check out that as well. Thanks for checking out this content, and we'll see you again on an upcoming video on this channel. Take care, and go Hawks!